The graph called a bar graph is used for categorical data, which can also be called qualitative data. So this is more where we're describing something than there's a number to represent it. So the key here is that when you list all the categories across the bottom and the frequencies, or it could be relative frequencies on the left side, um, that we're just going to be drawing above each category a bar. But what's really important here these bars are not touching, and so that represents that one doesn't necessarily spill into the other, as did with our frequency distributions. So as I go to draw this, I draw my L shape, I list my categories or qualitative data across the bottom. I started writing it diagonally, because that way I was able to squeeze it in. If you can write it across and have enough room, that's fine. Don't forget that you still want to label your uh, columns and rows and so then I do frequency along the left hand side and label it as frequency and now I'm ready to do those individual bars so above dogs I have a bar with just a height of 8 above cats its own separate bar not coming out of the dogs height bar does that sound weird I've got a 10. Now for reptiles, I have zero, so there's really nothing to draw. I kind of drew a little line, you don't have to. But with fish, I have a height of five. And so I don't know why so far every graph we've done. <laughs> In chapter two, the third column has always been a zero, but that's just a fluke. And we've now got our bar graph. A Pareto chart is a second type of chart that is for categorical data. But the important thing here is that the data is arranged from the largest to the smallest frequency, or you know, you could use relative frequency, but whatever you're using to categorize your data or to look at it, you always need to be going from the biggest to the smallest of whatever the category is. So here are my directions to do a frequency um, Pareto chart, so I don't need to worry about the relative frequencies. So again, I need to put them in order of largest to smallest. So the first thing I did was order them. 15 was the most occurrences, four was the second most, and two was the least amount of occurrences. So now I'm ready to go ahead and draw my L shape. Now don't forget, when I list my categories across the bottom, since they have to be listed from largest to smallest, I have to put soda first, then water, and coffee last and I labeled it that these were drinks because that's the information I was given. And along the left-hand side, I need to go to a height of 15. Going one through 15 is too many for me to draw. It's gonna be too hard to write it clearly. I could go by twos again. I don't know, I decided to go by threes just to do it a little bit different. And then I kind of forgot I was needing to stop at 15 and I went up to 18, oh well. But here's something else that's new. When I go to draw that first bar, then over soda, it actually comes out of the y-axis. For our other drawings, we could have started right out of the y-axis if it was labeled correctly across the bottom. For a Pareto chart, it has to start as far to the left as possible. And now as I go to draw the next bar, Notice it's touching. The directions don't mention that, but the bars do not have any gaps between them. When we had done a bar graph, we had the gap because one didn't spill into another. But with a Pareto chart, because you're saying it's a sequential order, the bars are side by side.